Hello everyone, welcome to episode 6 of the Karo Khan vs Everything speedrun. In this series I play two 10 minute plus 5 second rapid games, both whether I play with the white pieces or the black pieces in a Karo Khan-esque setup, so that you guys can try and understand some of the main ideas of the Karo Khan, whether I'm playing it from the white or black side. And I will be explaining my thought process in depth while I'm playing the game and then in the post game analysis after each one of the games, which will be timestamped below. So you can skip it if you want, but I would encourage you to watch it. Uh, I will be delving deeper into some of the ideas with the help of the engine and the ability to actually play the moves out on the board. I just want to say a massive thank you to commenters who have helped me to kind of reconfigure my mic because I've got like a new setup going. I also have a new ring light. So, um, I'm really splashing out for you guys. Uh, hopefully the setup is way better and the audio is far better than last video. The background noise should be basically all but cut out. And just all cut out really. I messed with a bunch of the settings. So yeah, I really hope you enjoy the new setup and the much higher video quality. If you want to check out the previous episodes of the Karo Khan speedrun, or indeed all of the Karo, Karo, Karo Khan games on my channel, they will be linked in playlists below. With that being said, let's get into game one. All right, we are playing the Italian Dugongo Bazuro, who is playing the Polish opening. Uh, obviously, I mean, I assume E5 is the best response against this, but we are playing the Karo Khan, obviously. So we are going to going C6 and D5. Apparently, this is known as the outflank variation. So, um... Yeah, it's a real thing, I suppose, going C6 against the Polish. And this is very interesting because this is obviously an incredibly unorthodox opening because why not put the pawn on C3? Why put it on B4? I don't know. Um, let's go Knight F6, just develop with normal Karo moves. I'd like to avoid Bishop F5 because then we get into London territory and um, this isn't a London speedrun. This is a Karo speedrun. So we're going to be trying to avoid that. Um, sorry about that. Okay, my opponent goes c4. Of course, we could take it, but I don't want to just let him develop, develop his bishop for free. Um, e6 helps defend d5, but that also blocks in my bishop. So I'm thinking about going bishop to c4 and then e6. If bishop c4, f3. I could even retreat the bishop to e6. That would be viable. If f3, though, my opponent, I assume, will just be weakening himself too much. Uh, this actually happened in the previous episode, but in the reverse. So I think this should be fine. There's no tactics with taking my knight because my queen is not under attack. Obviously, taking my knight would remove the guard of my bishop. But if this is played, we, of course, just take his queen and we are up, you know, a queen. <laughs> so... That obviously you want to keep an eye out for that, but here there is no worries whatsoever. If my pawn, if my pawn was on e6, then maybe bishop f6, bishop e1. Although, although if we had this kind of position, I could just take back with the queen because his rook would be hanging in the corner. So we're fine. We're fine. Bishop g4. If my opponent offers me a trade with the bishop, I'm going to snap his arm off and go e6. Because I'll be very happy to take that deal because I will be putting basically all my pawns on light squares. I might even be putting this pawn on a6. And therefore my light square bishop or the lack thereof, if I trade, is not that big of a deal because my pawns will be controlling the light squares for me. My opponent goes knight f3. Something tells me this is a little bit inaccurate. Um... I suppose my opponent didn't want to go bishop e2 because if I take on c4, he wants to take with the bishop. Um, I mean, it's a valid move. I think we're just going to go e6, though. One of the good things about my opponent having pushed b4 is the queen to b3 does not target b7, which obviously the bishop moving relinquishes the defense of because there's a pawn on, in the way on b4. And queen b3 is a very typical Karo idea to try and challenge for the light squares on the queen side when the light squared bishop has moved out. So we don't really have to worry about that in this scenario, although of course we do have this long-range bishop to be concerned about. Okay, so e6 obviously also opened up the attack of my bishop on b4, so my opponent defends it, which, I mean, just kind of exposes why b4 is a bad move, because we're able to develop with an attack, and my opponent has to play another unnecessary defensive move 
which kind of just gives us another tempo. We could take this knight, but in my head, I feel like we can take that at any time and there is absolutely no rush. Bishop e7 is a good move. Knight d7 is a good move. A5 is maybe playable, but I assume my opponent just pushes b5. I don't really want to allow that. I think bishop e7 is better than bishop d6, because on d6, the bishop could get targeted with c5, which isn't the end of the world. But I also want to put the bishop on e7 to support the knight so that he can never take and double my pawns, so my queen has access to the rest of the board without having to defend the knight. And if I put my bishop on e7 and castle and play a move like knight e4, then I could go for bishop to f6 in the future to challenge his dark squared bishop. So personally, I think this is a great move. His knight is still pinned to his queen, obviously. If he plays a move like queen c2, we'll probably take. Okay, my opponent goes bishop e2. So now the first thing that pops into my mind is pawn c4. Reason being is that he will have to take back of his bishop most likely. And he will have wasted a whole move going bishop to e2. But I don't want to relinquish my control of the center that easily. I can also reserve doing this at any point. I would rather him take me though. I'd probably take back with the e-pawn to get an open e-file. Also to imbalance the structure. So he would have e and d pawns. I would have d and c pawns. Because obviously I'm trying to win, right? So imbalances are something that I want. I'm just going to castle though. Um... Again, my plan is probably knight e4, bishop f6. I can always bring this knight out. Okay, the queen goes to c2. I could play bishop f5 here, just to attack the queen. And if bishop to d3... Hmm, I don't really want to take, I don't think. I couldn't play bishop f5 at any point though, and if he moves his knight, then I can just take his bishop. So I think I'm just going to leave the tension. I think knight to b to d7 is a perfectly valid move. I'm also controlling the e5 square, which is useful because he has a lot of pressure on it. And yeah, my plan, like I said, e4, knight e4, bishop f6 is something I always have in my back pocket. If I go for that and my opponent plays a move like d4, then all he's really doing is blocking off his own bishop, which I don't, I don't think is a good idea for him. Um... Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm pretty happy with this. Do we have, like, a clear advantage? No. But I don't see my opponent really with any actual positional advantages over me. I feel like I hold all the cards in this position. I may be wrong. I may be wrong. The computer may disagree with me, but... I don't know. I quite like this position. I have my bishop outside of my pawn chain. I have the classic Karo Khan structure with the bishop outside the pawn chain as opposed to the French defense where the bishop often gets locked on c8 or d7 or Fianchetto's itself because e6 is played on move one obviously whereas here we delayed e6 until we brought our bishop out first okay my opponent does take we can take with the pawn we can take with the knight or we can take with the e-pawn so let's evaluate if we take with a knight we lose control over e4 and c4 my opponent could maybe push e4 and d4, and I don't want to allow that. So knight takes is not a move I want to play. Okay, what about c takes? c takes opens the c file for me, and I can immediately attack his queen. I can maybe even shift my knight from b6 to c4, or b6 to a4 if I kick the queen off of this diagonal. So that's an option. e takes is also a move. It does provides some imbalance and it gives me an open e file to maybe lob a knight onto e4 with extra support but then he can always go d3 to kick me out so okay i i know i said i wanted to take with the e pawn but i actually might take with the c pawn i'd be interested to know um in the comments which one you guys would prefer to do if you were playing this because I feel like this is very similar to a lot of positions where it's like which rook do you move to a certain file and it can be either but personal preference, I think C takes is what I want to do. <laughs> this just feels right to me. I have an open C file now. My knight will probably shift to B6 to try and get into the light squares. I can always bring my bishop back to F5. Like I said, I hold that in my pocket at any time. But for now, I don't see the need to do that. Because I'm just applying some good pressure to his kingside. 
an h3 doesn't really do a lot if he goes g4 he's only massively weakening himself that feels pretty suicidal to me so yeah it's a pretty nice position we also have the option of potentially taking and then pushing e5 because we will now have enough support whereas currently the knight and the bishop control e5 and i only control it with one knight i could also continue with my plan of knight e4 bishop f6 and although i said that was my plan i don't have to do it immediately i can kind of do it whenever i feel like it at least that's how i see it in my head so i'm pretty happy with this position i don't see any actual weaknesses of ours and we're just further ahead in development my opponent still hasn't developed his knight if um rook c8 knight c3 I suppose he does develop his knight. Knight to... Let's say rook c8. Knight c3. A move like knight e4 looks nice. To apply further pressure. He doesn't win anything. But we also prepare to put our bishop on f6. So that's a good option. I think rook c8 is kind of a no-brainer move. If the queen comes out to a4. Then we can go knight b6. Because if queen to a7, rook to a8. The queen is trapped. Because our queen defends our knight, so the queen can't take. So that is an important line to consider. I didn't actually immediately calculate that. I just felt that the queen coming out was wrong. Um, I did obviously just calculate it then. But playing rook c8, I don't know, it felt wrong to bring the queen out. Worst comes to worst, even if we couldn't trap it with knight b6. Uh, we could just play a move like a6. And, you know, there's no worries. I think knight b6 would be far more accurate because we're preparing to bring our knight into the light squares. But even if we didn't have that, we'd be absolutely fine. Okay, my opponent goes queen b3 instead of knight c3. We can still go knight e4 though. And we do have ideas of dislodging the defense of d2. If he tries to develop this knight, we can do something like, let's say, knight e4, knight c3 takes, takes, and knight takes d2. It is possible that he falls for that. I think knight e4 is the, 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 the logical move. Because we're just putting some nice pressure on. It's difficult to kick our knight out. If he goes d3, he blocks his own bishop. It might be the best move. But we can just drop our knight back to d6 probably. And then prepare to play bishop to f6. Uh, because our bishop isn't actually doing that much. His bishop is by far his best piece. It is stopping our central expansion and applying pressure to our king side. Our bishop isn't doing a whole lot. So if he goes d3, I'm just going to drop the knight back. Prepare bishop f6. If he plays d4 to block the trade, then perfect. We'll get back on the e4 square and swing this knight over to c4 most likely. If we have knights on e4 and c4, we will be chilling. Like we'll have so much pressure, it'll be great. So I'm a big fan of this position. If you guys are currently enjoying the video and you're not yet subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? It's 13 minutes in and you still haven't clicked off. So you must be enjoying it. Um, at least I would hope. So, you know, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe and you can get my videos recommended to you more often. And if you're already subscribed, then thank you very much. I really appreciate you. D3, like I said, I think knight d6 is the move. Um, this knight struggles to move because we are pinning to his bishop. So I think knight d6 is perfectly fine. Could we go back to f6, I suppose? But then why did we bother putting the knight on e4 in the first place? My logic is so I can bring the knight to d6 rather than back to f6. So my bishop can go on f6 and, like I say, offer the trade. We already have this knight that can rotate to f6 if we really want anyway. We also have the f5 square for the knight if we want. I don't see what it does. He could he could kick us out with e4 anyway, but it is just another option. We also have the b5 square. We can't really access anything from b5, but it's worth keeping in mind. We could play b5 to try and choke his position, but a4 kind of helps him break out then. It, b5 would act more like a hook for my opponent to use against me to open up the a file than anything else. Whereas if he plays a4 by himself, I mean, he's not opening anything because our pawns are all the way back on the seventh rank. I I I think um, 
in basically every chess game, you see it in a lot of high level games as well, pushing pawns really often can come back to bite you and you have to think really hard about when you push a pawn because pawns don't go backwards, obviously. Okay, rook e1 defends the bishop and allows the knight to move, so I think we should immediately play bishop f6 because the knight might have been trying to access some of the dark squares, so we should immediately challenge his control of the dark squares in the center. Bishop f6 was, of course, our plan anyway. Um, and if he does move his knight, we can just take... Ooh. He takes us. Queen takes would attack the rook. He can't block with the knight because we control c3 twice. If queen takes knight d2, the rook is defended by the rook. Queen takes knight c2, we could go rook c3. Queen a5. Knight b6, now he can take here. Because our queen doesn't defend our knight anymore. We could take here with the knight, but I actually don't think I want to. I think queen takes is the move I want to play. If knight to d2. Rook to c3. Queen to a4. We could... Okay, rook c3, queen a4. What can we do? What can we do? He's attacking this knight as well. If b5, queen a7, we're not trapping the queen. So we could play b5 first. And if he goes a4, then rook c3. Although he does just have queen b2 anyway. So it's not even that good. What else can we play? We could go knight b6 immediately to take away the a4 square. And then rook c3 might be a bit better. We could also consider knight b5 to try and get in with this knight. If knight b6, a4, rook c3, queen b2. That looks fine. Knight b6, he might go knight d4, but he's not threatening anything. So I like this. Just take away the a4 square. And we might even be able to access it in the future, actually. Because, ah, yeah, that's, that's the idea. If, let's say, I don't know, he plays a waiting move like king h1. Obviously, he's not going to play that. But let's just say he plays that. Then rook c3, queen b2. We have knight to a4 then. Forcing the queen back. Then we can double up on the c file and we'll have a great time. Unfortunately, I'm expecting the move rook. A or E to C1. If rook E C1, he does relinquish defense of the bishop, which makes it difficult for his knight to move, although the knight can go to D4. It is worth noting, actually, if he does something stupid and we take the bishop and his rook takes, his rook will be hanging in the corner because his, rook, his E rook will no longer be defending it. So there are some cases where this rook on E1 could get overloaded I don't think it will happen, but it's worth bearing in mind because once you get a good position with active pieces, which we have, right? We have an active bishop, we have an active rook, we have an active queen. Our knights could get active soon. Then tactics start to flow your way. My opponent goes e4. Okay. This feels incorrect. This feels incorrect. I don't think it's the right idea. Okay, what about rook c3? That's the first move that comes to mind. Like I say, queen b2, knight a3. I don't see how this can be a bad move. Although, rook c3, e5. Rook c3, e5. Um, what about e5 from us stopping this? If e5, he can take rook c3, queen a2, maintaining defense of the pawn. Then rook fc8. That looks winning to me. I don't care about the pawn I've given up. Because it feels like we're going to slaughter him on the c-file. Yeah, e5 is a bit of a threat. It's a bit of a threat. I don't want to allow it. We also then take away the d4 square from the knight. So let's play this. Let's not think too hard. I think this is a sacrifice of a pawn. But I feel like it would be suicidal for my opponent to take it. Because the doubled isolated pawns on the d-file are just going to become exposed very, very quickly. At least that's how I see the position playing out in my mind. I don't see how the queen can maintain defense of the pawn forever. Oh, we don't actually have rook c3. I blocked my own defense of that square. Uh, we can go knight b4, though, to prepare rook c3. That's a bit of an oversight from me, admittedly. Um, 
I was thinking about e4, rook c3, but he just takes with the pawn. I don't want to allow that. Hmm. Knight b5. My issue is rook c1. Rook c1. How do we capitalize? We could... Ah, he also has the e4 square if I move this knight, though. Hmm. Bishop f5, maybe? Controlling e4 and attacking d3. Might be a move. This knight isn't going anywhere. Bishop f5 might be a good move. Because he's going to challenge me on the c file. Let's play it. Let's play it. I don't know if this is good or not. If d4, we can just take it. Um, this isn't that comfortable of a position, to be honest. I, I think I've misplayed this a little bit. But... He's up a pawn, but his pawns are just isolated on the d-file. Like, they're doubled isolated d-pawns, and we're just going to put immediate pressure on both of them. If I can get rook c3 in, I feel like I win. But it's actually kind of difficult to do that. I wonder, I wonder what the best move was when I went e5. This probably wasn't the best idea. Um, maybe I could have just taken. Takes, takes... Maybe even queen c3. I did consider queen c3, but I actually hold no threat if I play that, so I didn't do it. I don't know, maybe e4 was just a very good move. To me, it fell off, but maybe it was good. But, like I said, even here, although he's up a pawn, there's there's no, like, actual threat. Rook, c, rook ac1 seems like the natural move here. And then, what can we do? What can we do? Let's think about this. I don't really want to take, because I want the c-file. A crazy move would be g5, literally just trying to play g4, because this knight has no squares. It also stops back rank issues in the future. Okay, knight f1. I don't see... I mean, I guess he's coming to e3, or g3. But I can just drop my bishop back. Um, This feels a bit off. He also, okay, let's, let's see knight b5, looking for rook c3. Knight b5, knight here, rook c3, that looks very good. Um, We can just drop our bishop back if he attacks us anyway. The reason I didn't like knight b5 before was because it gave him the e4 square, but now not only do we, do we defend it with the bishop, but this knight isn't on d2 to access that. Let's do it. We can always whack this knight on d4 if we want. This um, g5, g4 idea still exists. It would kick his knight back to d2. Uh, from where it would do not a whole lot. Okay, knight g3. Mm, we can play this straight away. But then there could be tactics with dislodging my knight. So let's drop back. If he goes knight e4, he's not threatening anything. He might come into c5, but uh, d3 is also a bit loose. A rook c1, good move. Um, h5, h4. He's just going to put the knight here. Mm. Queen d3 attacks d4. Sorry, d5. D, d, queen d6 even. Uh, but then he has this. Uh, I don't know what I should be doing here. Knight e4 takes, takes... Mm, I don't love it. I really don't. We also don't have g5 anymore because our bishop's there. Yeah, this isn't good. Um, I feel like we have to take. I don't know whether that was correct. Probably not. Our knight was under attack. This position is kind of falling apart. But, mm, okay, we're only down a pawn, although his pawns are way better now. And the d pawn is protected and passed, so that is not great. Let's defend the pawn. I don't know where I want this knight. This knight is not good. Maybe on f6. Missed that move. Uh, I think we have to take. Could put the knight on c3. Oh, we could just take e4. What am I on about? We can just take e4. Bishop f3. Um, okay, he doesn't do that. Can just take d5. Let's do it. Okay, we restore material equality. 
So that's great. That's great news. Um, where do I want to go? Let's go to E5. Just target everything. Maybe there's some ideas of knight A4 here to, you know, argue that the queen is overloaded. We also have ideas of checking on the back rank, although he always have, has bishop f1. Wait, knight c4? Oh, no, it doesn't work, so his bishop gets back. Okay, what about... Oh, he's just offering a queen trade, though. Okay, let's just take the queen trade. Rookie 1... Sorry, e8. Okay. Um, go g6 to give our king an escape square. On a dark square as well. Defend. On a dark square, so his bishop can't attack it somehow. Whereas if we'd have gone like h6, his bishop might have been able to stop us. This is annoying. Our knight is really bad. Our knight is a really bad piece. No, then he can access the back rank. Uh, let's put the knight on a4. I don't know where we're going from here, but his rook is kind of stuck. Defending our knight's infiltration. Let's go king f6. Just get the king out. Okay. King here. Yeah, I'm actually going to get the king active, I think. Could go to f4. I'm going to drop back, though. Oh, we might have just allowed this. Ah, that's not good. Really not good. Damn it. Oh no, this is falling apart. We might be able to hold on for a draw here. But his bishop is really strong. Bishops are always going to be better than knights in these endgames, unfortunately. Hmm. I don't know where my knight's going, to be honest. The knight is probably good on e6, but our king is there currently. f3. Where do we want to put the knight? Uh, you can just do that, though. How do we defend that pawn? I don't know. Mm, I'm running out of time. We just completely lost here. Completely lost. I should have put the knight here to attack f2, but it doesn't even matter. Like, it doesn't change anything. Because of these connected passes. We can try and defend this position, of course. But I honestly don't believe that we can manage it. I honestly don't know how to do it. I suppose let's put pressure on. Here. I'm not going to allow this with check. But I also need to defend this. How is he going to defend? Rook here. Attack his bishop. It's the best we can do. We could take f2 if he gives us the opportunity. Okay, he doesn't. Let's go h5. I don't, I don't have much time to think about these moves, annoyingly. In g3, I guess, defends h f2, though. Although, I don't know if I was really going to take it. He can't play b5, which is useful. Because this bishop would hang. Let's play this. To try and dislodge the king from the defense of f3. I mean, we're setting traps, right? Wait, do we have this? No, then he has that. That doesn't work. But we are setting traps, which is good. Which is good. We're attacking his bishop. Bishop f3 is obviously the natural move. Um... I was trying to set up some mating net, but I don't think it works. I'll explain after the game if I remember. Oh, that's not good. That's really not good. Mm, I missed that completely. Ah, uh, yeah, we're completely lost now. Completely lost. His bishop is way too strong. Yeah, that's the problem. Knight versus bishop endgame. It's so difficult a lot of the time for the player with the knight. Bishop d5 is probably good. 
Okay, I mean, let's try and get our king over. I set up a bit of a barricade to stop his king from attacking our pawns. That was the idea of that. Let's go knight b7 to stop this. If bishop here, we just go back. I want to try and get my king in. If we, There's no way we save this. There's absolutely no way. And fair play to my opponent. He's doing a great job. He also has the e8 square to go after my pawn. He could literally sack these pawns. That might even be the best idea for him. Yeah, it's a good move. It's a good move. He can just go bishop to e8. I don't know why he's not doing it. I guess he's just trying to come around with his king. Can I stop him? I don't think so. I'm going to try something really sneaky. I'm going to try and bait his king in and then just run my pawn. There's no way that this is drawing, though. No way. H5. I mean, I have to take it, right? Is this drawing? Here, here, here. H4, king here, here takes, here, here, here takes, here, here, here. Da, 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 da. Let's do it. I don't know if that draws or not. I don't know. I don't, it's, it's really hard to know which the right setup is. But we're going to try this. Oh, that might be the best thing for him to do. We can't let him get opposition on us. I, th I think this is a draw now. Because we have opposition? Is this a draw? No way. If we maintain opposition, we should be able to get a draw. If he goes back, he's at risk of repeating. But now he can't get opposition with us? Because he can't go king g6? And then we get the opposition back? No way. Okay, I've got to be careful now. I think King F8 lost. But here we're okay. Because we triangulate. So we maintain the opposition. Let's go! Boom! We get a draw. Oh, from like the clutches of defeat. Wow, I actually can't believe that. We did... <laughs> We honestly did not deserve that. We were so lost. So absolutely lost in that endgame. Um, unbelievable. <laughs> let's, um, let's check the game analysis there. I'm sure we had an advantage in the opening. Like, we must have. But, alright. <laughs> let's get into the game analysis. Wow. Well, that, that was a very scuffed game. Uh, this is going to be a quick analysis because I am aware the game went on a while and we do have a second game to play. But yeah, B4, it's just not a move you see very often. And the thing is, obviously, E5 is the best move. Like, I know that. But this is a Karo Khan speedrun. So C6, Bishop B2, D5, E3. We go Knight F6. We have a good position. C4. E5 is the best here. Bishop e5, bishop b4. I didn't think giving up a center pawn for the b pawn would be a good thing. The computer seems to be reevaluating its decision now. So we went bishop g4, which is fine. Knight f3, e6. We attack the b pawn. My opponent goes a3. Knight, b Knight bd7 was the best move, but bishop e7 is fine. Bishop e2. The computer likes bishop f3, but it also just likes castles. We don't need to do anything major. Queen c2. a5 is the best move now. I was worried about b5. Bishop f5, bishop d3. Bishop d3, queen d3. cb5, queen b5. Sorry, c4, what am I on about? Why is this good? Queen d5. Queen d5. CD5, and apparently black has an advantage. Um, I actually don't know why. 
Maybe because our knight's going to access the weak light squares in the position. Maybe that's the reason. A4, knight bd7, knight c3, knight c5. I, I guess you could push for an advantage here. But okay, I just went knight bd7, which is absolutely fine, really. C takes, and C takes was the best option. Yeah, computer thinks this was the best, so I'm happy about that. Castles, rook c8, queen b3. And then we played knight e4, and this is fine, but it's not amazing. Queen c7 is good, but I didn't understand. I don't understand. What about rook c1? Here I take. Bishop f1? No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bishop f1. What's the idea? I guess this knight can't move because it's pinned, but if he goes queen b2 to defend this, then we go rook 8 to c2. Okay. Well, that's very interesting, but I did not see this. We just go knight e4, which is okay, but d3, knight d6, rook e1. The computer thinks this is basically equal. Bishop f6 is the best move, though. We have takes, queen takes, knight bd2. Here, rook c7 is good, and queen c3 is good. Queen c3, I didn't see the point, because we're not actually threatening anything. I think the idea is that if he challenges us, then we take, and it's kind of similar to what the computer was just going on about. Here we go, what, we double? No, we go knight b5. Or we take. Or rook fc8. What? Knight b5. Let's say, I don't know, a4. The knight's coming to c3. Oh, and then to e2. To deliver a really nasty check. That's an interesting idea. That is very interesting. But anyway, anyway, let's not get too much into it. We go knight b6. e4 is a mistake. So it is a mistake. And e5 is a counter mistake. Rook c3 is the best move. I rejected this on the basis of e5. Rook b3, ef6. I just have rook b2. Why did I reject this? I don't know. I think I should have thought a bit harder about it. Here we just have really, really nice pressure. And if my opponent goes something like rook eb1, then I just take and... There's a pin there. And if he goes rook a, b1. Rook takes. Rook takes. Gf6, I'm up a pawn. And if he takes me here. Then I just play rook c8. And I'm going to win the back the g7 pawn at some point. I should have seen this, to be honest. I really should have. e5 is a mistake, though. Ed5, good bishop f5, which is okay. Knight f1 was kind of confusing, but yeah, e4 is the best move, so I did consider this. I did consider this. Takes, knight takes, rook c3 is again on the cards, so let's say rook ac1. Knight c3, and apparently I'm better, because I'm winning the d-pawn back, and I have a lot of pressure. Hmm, okay, well I went knight b5, knight g3, bishop g6, ah, so I shouldn't have retreated the bishop, I should have gone rook c3 immediately. I was a little bit concerned though, queen b2, rook g6, a4, sorry, bishop g6, but I guess the point is that I'm, oh, I'm just taking on d3. And if you go for this now, then knight c4. This is a beautiful combination of pieces here. Rook a3. The queen is trapped. So the best move is bishop d3, rook a2, rook a2, and then what? Knight bd6. That's a long variation. I was low on time. I had like 30 seconds, so, you know, let's be a bit fair here. Bishop g6, rook ac1. I did throw the endgame away, though. Knight e4. I could have just taken on d5. Why did I not take on d5? I have absolutely no idea. Absolutely no idea. I took on e4 and then my opponent has a big advantage. 
we tried to fight back, and we did all right, to be fair. Queen b2, we had knight a4 here. So I assume he can't take, because queen takes rook c8, rook d1, bishop takes here, here, and then he gets mated. So we just end up up a rook. So knight a4 was the move, and then if he goes for like, I don't know, queen a1, then knight c3, and then this is a nice fork. So let's say rook e1. F5 is the move, trying to expose the bishop. But queen e4 is also fine. It's not the best, but it's fine. It's more findable. So you have rook c1, rook c1, queen e4. The issue is that after things get traded, like, white is just okay. I have to, I have to trade queens. And the issue is in this endgame that the bishop is just better than the knight because the board is wide open. So the bishop can just control more squares and from a distance. So rook e8, h3, g6, bishop f3. And it's just really hard to defend this position. So knight c4 is a good move. And if rook c2, b5. Ah, and I just go a6. And then my knight is actually participating in the game. The issue is my knight never got into the game. I played too passively with rook e7. I really have a bad habit of doing that, playing too passive. I need to fix it. But I'm okay. I just let the game slip a bit. Rook d6, king e5 is just a mistake because it allows here with check and then going back. After this check, I should probably retreat. Yeah, but this is psychologically difficult to do. Like to admit you were just wrong and then just waste a couple moves. But yeah, we went king e5. My opponent finds the right continuation. And yeah, we're just we're just losing. Knight d5, I tried to block the bishop's diagonal. Rook a5, knight f4. And yeah, rook b5 just wins, really. And I don't see what I can do in this position. And the computer kind of agrees. Like, I can't really do anything. I go after f2. I could have taken it, but I was worried about him pushing the pawn. Bishop d5, king f6, rook a5, rook d7. And okay, I feel like I'm making a tiny bit of progress with the move h4 check. Because then we win f2. And after the move bishop f3, I was trying to figure some kind of mating net with knight h1. And like rook d4, g5. It doesn't work. That's why I rejected it. But yeah, knight d3 just blunders, really. I what could I even do here? My the computer likes knight e4, just giving the knight away. Like, that's how bad the position is. But of course, yeah, this is just horrible. And I tried to stop his progress. So knight to b2 was designed to stop a4. And if he goes b5, then I was intending knight a4 to blockade this pawn and defend b6. Of course it's all losing, but I'm trying to make his life difficult. Here I go knight c3 so that he can't push this pawn because I'll take. And after he pushes b5, then I can play knight c5 with a temper pawn his bishop. I again control the a4 square and I control the b7 square. And I can move my king. b6, I go f6 to stop his king from infiltrating easily. I feel like I'm finding the best moves. It's just completely lost, obviously, because I'm just down two pawns. And yeah, here my opponent just starts playing good moves, right? Good moves. But after f5, bishop e8 has to be played. Because I can't defend. Here, here, he's going to win this as well. If I go knight d6, he can just move his king and throw this pawn down the board. And I can't do anything. But he doesn't. He lets me trade. And here I'm completely losing still. I'm still losing if he goes g6. And this is what I expected him to do. Because after the race... I'm a square away from promotion, and I'm, he's going to win my pawns, and the game is over. He takes on f5, though, and this is a draw, and then I throw it away with h4. But he, he only has one winning move, which is king g4, which is what he plays. I go h3, he takes. Where does he blunder? 
So we needed to go g6, king g8, and then g7. And then he wins. So the only move for me to play here is king d6. I did consider this, but I rejected it. I don't know why. King g5. I guess the pawn's too far ahead now? h4, king h4, king f6, king h5, king g7, and I blockade him. I'm in time to blockade the pawn. Horrible endgame from both of us, really. But uh, that's not what happened. I blundered the game away, and then he blundered it right back. Where did he blunder? King f6. And I needed to go king h7. Did I? We know the computer says it's all losing. King f8, g6, king g8. He literally can just play g7, and the game is over. But he didn't. He moved back, and that allowed me to gain the opposition and blockade the pawn. And now it's a draw. But only if I play the correct moves. If I play something like king to f8, it's game over, because king f6, my opponent gets the opposition. If I go back, he has g7. But yeah, I maintain opposition. King f5, I triangulate so that when he comes to f6, I'm on f8, and it's then his turn to move. g7, king g8, king g6, and it's stalemate. Horrible game. Really horrible game. <laughs> um, I'm really not proud of that. But uh, yeah, I think I'm actually just going to leave this episode here because this was an incredibly long game with, you know, a fairly long analysis. I tried to keep it short, but like, there was just an, a lot to analyze. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope it kind of shows like, you know, while I might, while I might be rated, you know, over 2000 online in most time formats. I can still make stupid decisions. And when you guys play someone that's way better than you, they will make stupid decisions. Like, we're all human at the end of the day. So, I hope this video was enjoyable. I hope you like the new setup. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.